All right, everyone, welcome back to Vulcan Deck Masters Week 2, Day 3. With me, Crip, we've just done uh, a cast between Harudra and Hawkeye. Those were pretty fast games and yeah. a bit of an unexpected outcome. I mean, it just kind of... It was almost a steamroll. Yeah. Now we're going to see some more powerful decks from one of these players. Uh, Kibler and Kang is going to be our next match. Kibler is bringing uh, Druid, a Band Hunter, and Shaman. So he's playing Druid and Shaman and Kang bringing in the Warrior Hunter and Band Warlock. So, uh, yeah, Kibler with Druid and Shaman. Uh, maybe we'll see some surprising things. Um, in, in the recent tournaments, uh, in the last few days, we saw Kibler bring the uh, Mech Shaman variation. So it might be a Mech Shaman and a Combo Druid, what is probably against a Patient Warrior and a Hybrid Hunter. So pretty fast, pretty aggressive decks. If uh, if they have like the god draw, we might see some short games again. But if we don't, I think we'll see some some fairly drawn out ones. Yeah, the thing is, Mech Shaman is a deck that's very under um, underrepresented, and it's odd to me because its matchups against pretty much everything in the meta game are really good. Like against a Patron Warrior, it'll win about you know sixty percent. Against a mm -hmm. mid range Hunter, it's also very strong. Against hybrid, it's actually horrible, but. That's just because you will tend to lose the race uh, since they will punch you in the face a lot faster than you can do it to them. But if they're, you're facing a pure mid-range deck, uh, which is definitely possible, then I think Mech Shaman is a great choice from Kibler. Yeah, the funny thing is, like, uh, you know, we talk about how it's bad against, like, uh, a hybrid hunter. But probably, like, more than half the games when you play hybrid hunter, it's basically face hunter. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You end up playing and, face, and then sometimes you curve out at the top yeah. when the game drags on. You're like, oh, I top deck this on an empty hand, and suddenly yeah, you're back the, in. The funny thing is, I think the, the Mech Shaman was originally built as a counter to face Hunter, because it would just outrace it. So, even though it's a bad matchup against like the hybrid Hunter cards, um, I think it's you know not that bad of a matchup overall, because uh, sometimes the game just doesn't end up going that way. And that is what we're opening up with here. We have the, the Mech Shaman versus the Hybrid Hunter. Yeah, well, it's probably mid-range being that does a web spinner. Um, mid range uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I rarely see web spinner in the um, more aggressive variant, so it's either a slower one. Man, Kibler has a really great hand here. Yes, he does. The, the, coin, um, the coin power mace is just going to make this for him. Yeah, and uh, Kang with no turn 3 at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of three drops he could get. You know, double animal companion, a bow, could pick up a mad scientist, or mm -hmm. but that double uh, double removal from the Ooh. power race. Kang knows that that hurts. That really stings there. Yeah. All right, Kibler in very good position in this uh, unfavorable ma unfavorable matchup. Um, explosive trap. That's uh, a little weird, isn't it? I'm a little surprised that he's actually playing the card, because very often you'll see in mid-range decks that it's not running it, but it's surprisingly effective against Shaman in this specific instance. Kibler happy that there is no Snake Trap, at the very least. Alright. Uh, he's probably going to be pretty surprised to find out what trap that is, though. Yeah, he's going to have to actually, test with Freezing, won't. so he no, won't. No, he won't. I don't think he will test with Freezing. No, he's he won't. Bad test. There's no reason. He'll just yeah, let it no sit there to... and not uh, figure it out for a while. Um, he might be thinking of Crackle and then a Totem, because that'll still let you play whatever 4-drop you want. I wonder. It guarantees the kill on the Shredder, and it makes it so you don't overload on 5 for your Water Elemental. The only thing that really stops you from doing is playing out your Fell Reaver, which you might really want to do next turn, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, like the earlier you do this, I think the, better, the, the more it'll pay off. Because it's one of those cards where the longer you wait against the mid-range cards, like high main and whatnot, the less and less it becomes relevant. Mm -hmm. Well, that Explosive Trap might end up working out pretty well for him. Like, like if he attacks waiting. into that Annoyotron, he'll give away the hand, I think. Like, he'll yeah. tell his opponent, hey, this is not a freezing. Although he could kill the Annoyotron straight up and pretend... Mm. But that's, that's is, kind of what I was yeah, thinking here. Right, like, right, right. It's, if, if you're going to play as if this is freezing, like what you can kill. you really do here? You have to play like the doggy and kill command the, the yeti? Or eagle horn bow attack the shield, trade your shredder? No, but attacking the shield means that it's not going to be a freeze trap. Well, it yeah. could be since you trade your shredder into it to return the yeti, right? Okay. 
Yeah, it's like there's two then, ways he could represent. But then why would up. why would Kibler play the Yeti? Would you mean That's, attack with it? No, like like if if Kibler was trying to play around freeze trap, why would he play the Yeti over a Crackle Totem? To replay the Noitron for four, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It's so it weird. The, yeah, it is a really weird game so far. I don't know how much Kibler knows about his opponent's deck. That's what I'm curious about. Like, Dang. is Kibler... I mean, at some point, he's going to have to trigger the secret. He might be thinking, I can do it with a totem later. Um, with a flame tongue. Like, you you spawn a totem, then you use your flame tongue on it to return just the one little guy. Alright, well, you don't want to take too much damage here, so you're going to go for the doggy. And now let's see if he plays around freezing, and he does, so... Not this going is, for... I don't feel this is actually playing around freezing, like something's gonna get frozen. Like two creatures without taunt is not playing around freezing. He was just playing around nothing. Well, in his mind at least, he's playing around freezing, right? Because he's not attacking with the Yeti yet. Yeah, but my point is, not only is he not attacking, but he's not playing a smaller creature to freeze. Right, yeah, yeah. No, no, I recognize that, but like from his perspective, that's probably what he's attempting to do. Unless he really just wants to be able to get the two drop from the shredder to take well, the freezing. Perhaps, perhaps he just doesn't want to give the bow another charge this turn. So it makes it makes more sense this turn than the last. I'll, yeah. I'll give him that. I, I can understand it here. Um, it, it's a really tough spot, but man, it's I don't a tough know. spot. It's a tough matchup in the first place at this point. Yeah. You're, uh, I mean, Mech Shaman is typically very good, but the way, like, the, the trap that Kang is playing is actually not only mind gaming Kibler, but it could be very effective at the wrong time. Actually, that's the only thing it's doing if you really think about it. Like, that, mm -hmm. that card on its own is terrible. Yeah. It's not doing anything, but the fact that it's, it's represented as a freeze trap is actually holding off Kibler's aggression and may cost them the game. Well, if he doesn't play around it, if he, if he doesn't trigger it now, he'll never trigger it, so... I mean, you've got to double attack into... Like, in your mind, you double attack into that uh, fairy dragon, and you can actually wipe the board clean. No reaction, so he was playing around explosive, it seems. Really? Looks like it. Oh, no, no there it is! <laughs> I was thinking to myself, this is way too slow of a reaction. Something was like, oh, so maybe I just threw this game. Well, he still has a huge amount of bursts. You know, there's the crackle with the lava burst. Yeah. Like, it's still not over. But let's look at Kang's hand. I mean, he's got Dr. Boom next turn, plus kill command, Glaivezuka. Two bow charges. He's not about to exhaust his damage. I think you actually go face here. I think what you're talking about is exactly right. Yeah. Just you, uh, pushing. Yeah. If, if you go face, Kang can't really afford to attack with his bow into a creature. And if he doesn't, then your flame tongue totem is probably going to give you full value. So four right. from that, three from crackle at least, and then five from burst. So Kang is on the top deck. That is not what he's looking for. He just plays Dr. Boom straight up. Whoa. Okay, no, he didn't. I was scared. I really I mean, scared. I feel like the only chance here is the fairy dragon goes into the shredder. Or not the shredder, yeah. The no, no, no. no. Okay, you, you can do Fairy Dragon and Shredder and hope for Doomsayer. That's the play. But I think I think you kill the Yeti and hope for like uh, a flip or a freeze. Just well, to you can, deny some damage. You can kill Command the Fire Ellie with a web spinner, right? Oh, right. That's true. Okay, but now he's dead, right? Yeah, there's yeah, that's absolutely ten, that's no more chance. <laughs> absolutely no chance. Oh, yeah. Hunter's well, about to... Right. Uh... So uh, even though uh, some really weird mind game stuff going on uh, with the traps that really punished the uh, the shaman, just the burst on the end is just way too much to deal with. I would have uh, I would have liked Kang to play that web spinner with a kill command, but I think he really wanted to push for damage as soon as possible and force Kibler to play reactively. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen, and Shaman is going to win. That's not something I expected to say today. Man, Kibler's been wrecking it recently. Uh, in the yeah. last turn I cast the other day, um, he went uh, he went two zero up against the other guys, and uh, you know the shaman was present the same, uh, just cleaning up. Yeah, pretty good stuff. The last three games I've seen a Kibler, he won all three, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, he's got to win with his next deck though. Like I don't know what his druid is gonna be. Like if he's gonna play a standard mid range, um, or something more special. I mean, mm -hmm. it is well, Kibler. Generally, the, the tournament druid is pretty standard. Um, there's not really much creativity. 
but sometimes that small creativity is what makes the difference, as we saw in uh, life coaches' games. Um, but some people have been playing like taunt druids recently, like with combo. I I can't say that's right. That's right. Those, yeah, those have shown much success, but they weren't terrible, I guess. Yeah. I, it, it feels like Druid has been almost figured out to the point of um, just being too standard at this point. We really need like a massive upheaval as far as Druids go to change how they're going to play. Oh, man. Now that's, that's a start. Yeah, just do it. You just do it. Do it. Yesterday, Kibler, you said tomorrow. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Kibler doesn't do it. Do it. Nope. Yeah, that's it, Kibler. You're gonna have to go up against double mad scientist. I I wouldn't want to be the one going up against that. I like I'm just I'm sorry, Kibler. Okay. Well, Kibler's hand is again pretty awkward, but there's still a lot of play left in this game. Ah, Kang picking up one of the worst cards to draw. If he picks up a second trap, it's gonna get even worse. Oh nice. wow. That's well, saving gorgeous. those things makes it so on turn seven he can combo the hunter. Oh man, that that little uh, three three though, that web spinner value is pretty solid. Gibbler's got no wrath at the moment. No, uh, it doesn't really matter. I think it's okay. He's gonna just drop the uh, Azure Drake if he gets a wrath. He might play it. Wow, he actually gets the Emperor for the lower cost combo. Could he? Would he dare? Nah, I like the Drake. Um, oh, I'm the Drake, Drake is obviously a lot better. Oh man, if Kang plays that bow next turn, does he ever? Though I'm not even sure. That, that, that seems a little weird. Just trying to slow down the game by attacking the web spinner. Okay, I guess. I don't think he can race here. Can you? I mean, he's on 30 health. Oh god, that bow is gonna get punished. Not only is it not saturating the mana, and you know I've learned from HPL that it's very important. So, this is, um... Do we know if that's really the other trap, though? It could be explosive, right? We know that Kang's running one. Yeah. I like that uh, Emperor play from Kibler. A four mana Harrison can cure very well with his, you know, three mana Keeper. Iron for a grizzly. Not bad. Is this Tavern Brawl? <laughs> <laughs> this mix is good, man. Do you think so? I didn't like it at all. I played like four games and I got bored. It's easily I, the best one. Interesting. I like. I'm at the absolute opposite. I loved the first one. First one was good. I, the second I, I, one, I, thought, I, I thought it won. sucked at the start because there's no deck. I just expected more. But at the end yeah. of the week, I, I liked it. I was I was played up until it like shut down. Okay. I think the second one was like the worst thing ever, though. Yeah, second one really. I was like, oh, I mean, I did end up making a really, uh, really good deck that basically never lost against Mage, but it was the most boring thing because I couldn't play anything else. Okay. All right, so freezing trap, and he's not gonna get the Harrison value. I thought he might try to go for that, but well, he still might. There's still yet some play there. He can wipe the board pretty clean here. He can actually donate a charge here. Yeah. He, he By, can. Uh, yeah, he can draw. He can druid into the uh, mad scientist, force out an explosive. Yeah. The thing is, at the moment, if freezing trap is played, the uh, the emperor it might can't be like attack again. Freeze. But he might Kibler might not care because he can trigger it again with the Trian. So it's like it's like nothing that happens here is really that bad for Kibler with the Harrison drone. Yeah. Yeah. Things are not looking too good for Kang, but at the same time. The Druid's at 16 life. Mm. Maybe you can make some something happen from this. I feel it's like kind of I feel like slamming down the high main and going face is the play. Force the Druid to be reactive with limited tools. Because really, Druid yeah. doesn't have the uh, the spot removal that it very often wants to have. Yeah. He's going to go for the slower play. And Harrison Jones is going to be a pretty smooth play. Yeah, but this this doesn't work because of the, the Treant, right? Yeah, I'm surprised he actually played that knowing that there was a Treant left. That's a pretty good follow-up for Kibler. Gets the healing if he needs it. He's going to have to delay the healing until next turn, though. So he, yeah. he, he could still lose, I believe. 
Uh, if he if he doesn't manage to hear a power and the shredder stays on the board or whatever comes out of the shredder stays on the board. Hmm. Uh, if he get if Kane gets a kill command. So you trigger the trap with the trant, then you Harrison Jones and see where that leads you. You could even silence off the shredder and kill it if you wanted, or low step to prevent kill command. Yeah, I think the trant it, it just plays around both traps. Yeah. I think Kang just realized that option was available. No way. I mean, he knew it, right? Like, it was... It was we got a reaction out of him, though. He's like, oh, damn. Really? Yeah. Okay, that, that's a bit unusual. I can't say I expected that. I mean, most people end up having to track it by auto... Oh, God. What on earth? You could innervate, innervate Lothab. I kind of like the <laughs> Lothab play better. It would have been so amazing to actually set up for the next turn. It's nearly guaranteed lethal, but he's going to get a discount on his cards. That wow. triant just. Uh, That's a trap. There's four traps in this deck. Yeah, there's explosive left. He's played two two freezing so far, right? And one oh, explosive. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I thought I thought the explosive already happened. You're right. Yeah, it's a triple trap. Triple trap trick. It could be four. We don't know. There could be four. You're right. It could be the quad trap. Very, very <laughs> unlikely though. That's just something you never really see. <laughs> In before the prismatic trap hunter deck with one snipe, one misdirection, one freezing, one explosive, and uh, I feel misdirection is really the fun snake. one. Yeah, misdirection is the pure skill based one. So yeah, that's the one where like the mountain giant runs into the other mountain giant instead of you losing the game. And then you feel very skilled for all of a moment. Yeah. So Kang knows that he can't really make anything happen. No. As far as Again, I... play, play to win, play to win. This is it. Um, there's no lethal yet, as far as I know, right? So. Um. Yeah, because the five one dies. I mean, you could play. play oh no, there is lethal. There is lethal. Is there? Five. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, oh no, 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 no. It's still like short. fifteen it's at the very most. It's one he short. Got 15. Well, I mean, that Doctor Boom's gonna go short. down. Yeah. Yeah. It's one short because uh, you can Ancient of Lore the 5 1 and charge. Yeah, it's, uh, it's close enough, up. but it's like. Not there. Not quite there. He's going to have to make the trade into the Doctor Boom. And before yep. Snake Trap. Yeah, it looks like you, um, you trade into Doctor Boom with the 5 damage and the 2 damage. The 5 goes face. I'd leave the Boom Bots up, and you can. Uh, heal yourself for five and play low then. Yeah, that is definitely the play. That is such a strong play. That is such a strong play. Lothab and heal. In what universe does Kang come back? Um. Well. Huffer. No, yeah, for eight mana. Zero power as well. <laughs> I think what he needs at this point is a second explosive trap. No, if he, if, if he got a huffer, he was pretty close to lethal. He's two off. Because the boombox can hit four face. Oh, you're right. You're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, those are not exactly the outcomes of the boombox he wanted. No. So, Kibler knows that there's a guaranteed lethal. Kibler with the sweep. Oh man, this guy's on fire. Holy cow. A Kang, not so much though. Some questionable plays and some very difficult spots in the first game, but I mean, you can't blame him. Overall, some really solid stuff, and uh, Kib Kibler slams it down. Kibler yeah, does does put a point on the board. He is, uh, I believe, one and one now right. in his bracket. Uh, Kang is really the one who's basically out. Uh, he's not out, out, but coming back. Uh, from this situation is just unbelievably unlikely. Um, so yeah, Kibler kind of uh, doesn't secure his spot, but uh, continues on one and one again. Being in the middle of the group is uh, is kind of like going through to the next stage. Yeah, especially when like top three of a group of five ends up moving on. I think it's a very comfortable spot. So, and I'm pretty happy Shaman won.
So that's again, you know, one of the upsides of uh, seeing Kibler yep. take the series against Kang. So we're going to be taking a short break, guys. We're going to be casting the last, last match of the day. Again, I want to remind you that Kalento's match will be rescheduled at some future point. We're going to see Forsen versus Kuvdon. Kuvdon's a player that's been, uh, you know, half and half. Uh, he's a Finnish player. He's one and one right now in his group. Mm -hmm. And Forsen is, I believe, just up one win, unless I'm yeah, mistaken. One I don't think zero. I've seen him play again um, ever since. So we're going to be right back after the break, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 